make a concluding comment on the uh, on the experience of, of going to the round table. It's very interesting, you know, the networking opportunities you get when you do professional activities like we all do. This was particularly interesting because it was really an international uh, group there. And we, we learned a lot. I think they learned some stuff from us. I think we learned a lot from them. Uh, from a personal level, there's just I'll just mention four names that mm -hmm. you get to. I mean, you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with people. You know, you get to know them after a week. Uh, uh, two, uh, three Americans and one Brit. They, come, they, you know, really we maintain communication with them. Two of them were the uh, facilitators of the that particular session. Uh, one was uh, uh, Dr. Dan Hall Flavin from the Mayo Clinic. Very impressive guy. I mean, this guy's an MD and a PhD researcher in neuroscience. And you know that that's part of what we're seeing happening around here uh, with uh, some of the work that Rutgers is doing with uh, the foundation with former Congressman Kennedy. He's part of that team now. So we talked to, to Dr. Dan for quite a while about that whole area of neuroscience, where that's going, and all the kinds of uh, research being done there. Very impressive guy. The other uh, one was uh, a uh, the British uh, mm -hmm. co-leader, uh, Dr. Margrave, uh, interesting guy. It's like kind of I, he, he would be in the past under Tony Blair, the mm -hmm. se this Commissioner of Secretary of Education, whatever that's called. Have in different Britain. names from yes. over, there, over there. So policy, a, he know, did all the policies. Policy, he international. He does international, you know, consulting now in Europe and around that for for public school system. But he also had an interesting connection with Teresa because <laughs> he was an historian at some stage okay. <coughs> and did a study of. Patterson. The, di the dye manufacturing industry in Patterson, where Teresa was raised. I'm from, I'm from Patterson. He knew like so every yeah. street there in Patterson, New Jersey. man writes, writes policies. Yeah. He meets with presidents of Africa yeah. all over the world and writing their policies. Right. And we're eating breakfast one morning only to find out my father was a, a manufacturer in the big city factories in Patterson. And so we hit it off right away yeah. because I'm from Patterson. So we had great conversations. So one of the partnerships that I'm looking at is, uh, and he's opened that door, is to look at if we want to do something, whether it be in the STEM, some field in working with the students over in Britain and our students over at Margate. So he yeah, and was very open to opening the doors for for our school district. So that's another layer that uh, I'll be looking at for Margate. In addition to our uh, correspondence and talking about the neuroscience, that is another field that I am looking very much into taking our school district in and exploring that further so that as we look at the science areas, we look at medical fields, uh, I want our kids to be exposed early on starting in kindergarten to this field of neuroscience. So I'll be bringing that part as another dimension. And that's connected to our nursing program already, yes. right, Art? So it's interesting. The other two are Americans. Uh, interesting connection, Dr. Phil Yeagle, who's the dean of the faculty at Rutgers. <laughs> so he knows our connections with the university. Yes. We spent some time with him. He, was all, he also taught at Oxford for two years as a, what do they call them, uh, tutor. Interesting term. People here familiar with the system over there at Oxford? They call their professors tutors. And it's a, talk about personalized instruction. They're assigned probably eight to 10 students for the semester or whatever, how long that is. And they work like meet with them every day. It's like personalized instruction. Then the other part of the university, and there's 39 colleges. There is no Oxford College. It's a confederation of 39 colleges. Oxford University is the cover. And there are programs offered among the colleges that if your tutor, whatever the field is, wants you to go to those programs or to that lecture, whatever it is, that's how you get the other part of your education. Highly personalized. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, mm -hmm. When we were there, one of the uh, longtime tutors uh, had passed away and they were having like a really elegant, you know, commemoration mm -hmm. and I was wondering boy they must really do this for all their tutors thinking that they're like our tutors and they said no that's really what you would call a professor it's very interesting and and Phil was had taught there so he knew about how it worked and all that stuff for a couple of years and the last one uh, goes right down to what we're doing here in our student success yes. we met, I met up with Larry Litecki who's a colleague of mine he's he was president of Century Community College in Minnesota he's now the assistant chancellor of mm -hmm. the universe of the 
Minnesota Community College system, and he is a coach with the Achieving the Dream. Now, we've all been talking about student mm. success. So I know Larry for a long time, and I didn't know he was going to be there. But uh, he reconnected us to uh, Achieving the Dream. He was very persuasive about how it worked. Uh, and uh, so as we look at our student success model that uh, Dr. Wexler and, and, and uh, Dr. MacArthur and Dean Carmen were, are heading with our Enrollment Management Committee, we're going to have a hard look at what kind of external entities we will partner with. And I know we're looking at achieving the dream as, as one on the, on the table. So Larry was a, was a very good connection for us over there, uh, unexpected, but a great unintended outcome. So that's, that's a little bit about the informal part. We all know that education takes place both in the classroom and outside the classroom. Same thing with, you know, with uh, professional development. You do a lot in the, on the networking side. That's really the conclusion of our story about what we did. Uh, of course, the presentation there was very, was very structured mm -hmm. at 45 minutes, and then there was Q&A, and it was like very structured and, and that type of thing. So we thought we would take an opportunity here to do it a little more informally and talk about it and about the context of it. Um, any questions? We're open to any questions you would have? What we saw? That, just out of curiosity, I, Otto, I heard you mention that we have some people that are here that maybe be interested. Are they in the room and doing some GIS partnerships with the college or um, GIS? They're, or? they're local public schools that we have had conversations with. And, and are they represented at this table uh, here, any of them? Are that any public schools? No, I am. Yeah. <laughs> at least you did yeah. pointing at me. I'm from Cedar Creek High School. Oh, and oh, okay. We're running the environmental magnet program and um, we are very interested in getting involved with you all in the GIS system here. Yes. And, and Lisa happens to be uh, yeah, uh, a board. Of the board and Ventner. Mm -hmm. yes. We've been talking with Teresa about some STEM outreach mm -hmm. and bringing this to the Ventner uh, yeah. K through eight as well. So uh, hopefully we can expand. <laughs> sure. Uh, because uh, again, if we're going to have, I think what what the the, the statistics as you look at that is that they have to, uh, they need a hundred thousand teachers. <coughs> that are trained in STEM if we're really going to be leaders in that. That's a lot of people. And so it needs to begin somewhere. And if we can work together with schools that are interested in the K through 12 and bring that group to you, uh, that's a lot of teachers, you know, and we want them to be comfortable in the science field. Uh, I thank you for your time and welcome any kind of comments. By the way, this is a, a 45 uh, minute video that we did of all our engineering projects. And I will tell you, the excitement that the kids have when they come there and they're showing their parents where they're able to turn on this light in the computer. And over the past two years, how much it's grown, you would not believe it. And the kindergartens to see what now the fourth, the fifth grade kids are doing, the eighth grade students, it's just amazing. So I welcome, we'll be around here. Any kind of comments or questions, be more than glad to answer it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was your phone, Teresa.